Hey guys, it's me Zane and today we're gonna discuss on Cidium Care. Oh. Okay guys, so how do you like this new idea? This foreground thingy here on the sides? I don't know, I just made that because I felt like I must do something different today, but whatever. Today we're gonna talk about Oncidiums and Oncidium Intergenerics and their general care. Oncidiums, Oncidium Intergeneric Hybrids and this whole Oncidium family is a very popular orchid family. There are more reasons why it's very popular. They can range from tiny orchids with tiny leaves, tiny flowers to huge leaves, huge flowers and also they can come in various shapes and various sizes and they can be also fragrant and they are fairly easy to grow so they can be easy for the home grower as well and they are indeed beautiful and there are a lot of gorgeous gorgeous Oncidium hybrids and Oncidium species out in the world. Okay so let's start this Oncidium intergeneric care topic with the care itself and within the care let's start with watering. So Oncidiums are different than the most common type of orchid and I mean the Phalaenopsis orchid which you can find them in any garden centers and in flower shops. Well you can find Oncidiums there as well. They are a little bit more rare but you definitely can find some from time to time Oncidiums as well. So Oncidiums are a different type of orchid because they have different shape, different growing structures, so in watering they are different as well. So Oncidiums have these pseudobulbs which are water and nutrient storages for the plant but that doesn't mean that they are like succulents or cacti that they need only a little bit water. Actually Oncidiums and these Oncidium hybrids and Oncidium intergenerics need more water than Phalaenopsis orchids. The orchid pseudobulbs only help them to survive those periods in which there is more dryness or less water, less rain happening in their environment. So they generally need more water than Phalaenopsis orchids. And that's why if you are using organic types of medium like sphagnum moss and bark chips, it depends on your environment because in that case you will provide enough water for the plant so you don't have to water it like every day but also you will provide enough air and enough air pockets in the pot so you won't suffocate the roots and if you are using inorganic types of medium you can use some materials which can actually hold water for a longer period of time so water will be available for the plant for a longer period. In regards of watering your oncidiums you have to water when the oncidiums pot is almost almost dry but you don't want them to dry out completely and to have dry roots completely dry roots in a pot you just need a little bit a tiny little bit amount of moisture in the pot and if you water at that point but actually you can see the signs of dehydration on the plant itself as well because the orchid has pseudobulbs and if the pseudobulbs don't get that moisture don't get that hydration from the pot they will actually start to wrinkle tiny wrinkles will appear on the surface of the pseudobulbs so you know the moment to water has come if you don't water your orchid kids in time and you let them dry out for a longer period the pseudobulbs on your oncidiums can have these wrinkles and they will appear smaller in size because they are not fat they are not plump and they are not full with water so they will be wrinklier they will be thinner and smaller in size and also if these smaller dehydrated pseudobulbs and growths start to produce a new growth well the new growth needs a lot of water so in that case it won't get that much hydration that it needs so it will have accordion shaped leaves as it grows it won't have the energy to grow that much as it wants and maybe the leaves will stuck together and they will have this accordion shape and that's not good for the plant so you really need to water as much your own sediums to provide that plump look to your pseudobulbs. Well the second thing in this care aspect is the fertilizer. If you are using a balanced fertilizer for your plant that might be just enough for your oncidiums and your intergeneric oncidium hybrids because a balanced fertilizer will actually have 
everything in it what the plant will need. If you wouldn't use fertilizer with your own psylliums, in the following years you might actually experience less blooms per, I don't know, flower spikes or or lack of blooming or something like that but if you provide fertilizer so if you provide nutrients for the plant your plant will give that back to you so it will have more flowers it will flower for you regularly if you care for it properly and well of course watering and fertilizing well they hold hands and they come together so if you are watering you can also fertilize but it really just depends how do you want to use these two things together right now i myself i fertilize at every watering with a very weak solution and sometimes i just flush my pots with uh, clean rainwater you can just choose to fertilize with a higher amount of fertilizer for example once a month but also you can choose to fertilize with less amount of fertilizer with every watering so it just depends how do you want to do that regarding the temperature on psylliums can be warm to intermediate growers that means they will feel good if you feel good in your home so that means from like 18 degrees celsius to 28 degrees celsius they will do okay for you they can actually tolerate higher and lower temperatures as well but the most ideal temperatures are in this range if they tolerate lower or higher temperatures that doesn't mean that they will actually enjoy it but they can definitely tolerate like down to 13 degrees celsius and they can tolerate up to 34 or something like that degrees celsius as well if we are talking about the light aspect in their care well they do need more light than phalaenopsis orchids phalaenopsis orchids are actually a low light orchids they do good in bright shade well oncidiums need a little bit more than that if they experience direct sunlight hitting the leaves in the morning because in the morning the sun is not too hot they will actually enjoy that bright filtered light is good for them throughout the day just you have to actually think about not burning the leaves because too much light and too much heat on the leaf surface will actually cause the cells inside the leaves collapse so it will get burned the leaves will get burned if they actually experience too much light so you just have to find that perfect amount of light that the oncidiums need because if they don't get enough light on your plant can be less blooms or even it can skip blooming because the light was not enough for the orchid also some of the oncidiums not all of them some of the oncidiums can have a spotting on the pseudobulbs if they are getting enough light it's a type of a chemical reaction to the light because the orchid wants to protect itself from too much heat so it uh, brings out this anthocyanin in the leaves and I have a topic about that check out the info card in the corner and if they bring out this anthocyanin in the leaves that will protect them from too much sunshine but it's not always the case a lot of oncidiums actually don't have this anthocyanin but there is a few of them which have this uh, chemical compound in their leaves and in their pseudobulbs so it can show this tiny bit of discoloration when there is enough light hitting the plant now let's talk a little bit about the visuals of these oncidium types and I will use these to show you how do they look like actually so oncidiums have a specific organ which for example phalaenopsis don't have and this is the pseudobulb as you can see by the base of the leaves there is this pseudobulb which is a plump storage organ and it will store energy for the plant it is a storage for water and also for nutrients so if you provide enough water and enough nutrients for your plant these pseudobulbs will be plump but if you don't provide enough water they can wrinkle really early while this oncidium here is due for watering so i can show you a wrinkly pseudobulbs how it looks like if you look at these pseudobulbs you can see how wrinkly it is it is more wrinklier than it should be well that's because it's blooming and this specific type of oncidium is prone to wrinkle their pseudobulbs when it's in bud or it's in bloom but if you have an oncidium which really needs water the pseudobulb will look like this it will be really wrinkly well the other thing which is different between the phalaenopsis and these oncidium types is that they have these 
long and thin leaves. These leaves are not that thick as for, for example the Phalaenopsis leaves. They can bend really easily and they are really long. So these leaves are on the sides of each pseudobulb. So if you look at this pseudobulb you will see there can be one to three of these top leaves and there can be leaves on the sides of the pseudobulbs. So this is how a typical Oncidium looks like. There is the pseudobulb on the center and the leaves are on the sides and also some leaves are on the top of the pseudobulb as well. And one more thing which connects this whole vegetative growth and organs of Oncidium types is the roots. I'm not sure if I can show you on this one so we'll use my other Oncidium here. If you look at here you can see that these Oncidium roots are actually way thinner than for example Phalaenopsis orchid mm, roots and that's because Phalaenopsis orchids can store their energy in the roots because they are thick, they are fleshy and all the water and nutrients can be stored inside those roots because they are thick, there is there's actually space for it. But for example in the case of Oncidiums there is no space for having too much water and nutrients in the roots that's why they need more water and their only storage organ is the pseudobulb and that's why they have to be plump at all times because that means your orchid is healthy. Every time an Oncidium orchid starts to grow a new growth that will mean that it will produce a new pseudobulb and that's how they actually live. A pseudobulb which has bloomed for example this one is in bud after blooming this one will start to create a nubbin at the base and it will start to show leaves it will be longer and longer and after time these leaves will open up they will actually fold out and inside of those leaves there will be a pseudobulb and that pseudobulb is the newest pseudobulb which the orchid creates and that pseudobulb will bloom the pseudobulbs actually can bloom only once in their lifetime so once a pseudobulb actually bloom there is a very very little chance it will bloom again in its lifetime but very not because one pseudobulb can actually create more flower spikes not only one it will depend on the intergeneric hybrid or the actual genes of the orchid what's in the orchid's genes because for example this one the Hoveara lava burst red bug is very prone to create more flower spikes per pseudobulb and right now I have three flower spikes per pseudobulbs and they are branching out for example the Catherine Zock is another one which can have more flower spikes but there are a lot of Oncidium types and Oncidium intergenerics which will create only one spike and also these spikes can branch out but there are actually cases when they just do not have the genes to branch out so they will have only one single flower spike without any branches. Talking about pseudobulbs, if you want to make a division of your orchid you will have to divide your orchid that each division has at least three full-size mature pseudobulbs because if you have less pseudobulbs than that you can expect slower growth but if you have at least three pseudobulbs per division that means it can continue its growth in a normal growth rate and you won't slow down the orchid by dividing it with like one pseudobulb per division because that's just very bad. If you want to have continuous and uh, fast growth you will have to have at least three pseudobulbs per division. But if you don't want to divide your orchid into more pieces you can leave them together and in time as it ages with the more pseudobulbs it will create more and more new growths at once and that means you will have more flower spikes at once on your orchid. Now if we are talking about the spikes and the blooming of orchids well let's take a look how do these spikes grow and where they come from. As you can see here is the pseudobulbs here are the leaves and flower spikes will be created in most cases from the first leaf which is next to the pseudobulb. The flower spikes actually emerges from that leaf, like in this case. Also there is a flower spike coming from this leaf, but since this orchid is prone to create more flower spikes per pseudobulb and this one created three flower spikes, I have one flower spike which is growing also here from this leaf. This one actually 
broke the rule, it not actually broke the rule, but in this case, since it had to create more flower spikes, or actually it wanted to create more flower spikes, it created a flower spike from this leaf as well. And when they are uh, growing new growths, well, they grow those new growths from the base, but those new growths actually can grow out from these leaves as well. Because at the base of every leaf, there is a node, there is an eye, there is a growth point, and that growth point will decide to grow into a pseudobulb or into a flower spike, depending where it is located. Now let's talk a little bit about their season. If you buy Oncidiums, well, pretty much you can find them all year long in flower shops and garden centers, so they can be in bloom in all year long. Every time a suitable matures, they can bloom. We can see a little bit of a pattern, a blooming pattern in Oncidiums and Oncidium intergenerics, because a lot of Oncidiums like these actually will bloom in the fall or the autumn time. And this means that Oncidiums can be these seasonal bloomers, but if they were forced to bloom in a different season, they can bloom all year long. Basic rule is that every time a suitable matures, it can grow a flower spike and it won't wait for the autumn time. For example, there's a suitable maturing at the beginning of the summer, it won't wait for the autumn to come and it will bloom only then. Well, right away it will bloom or it will create a new pseudobulb, a new growth. So if you have an Oncidium type and it created a new bulb, maybe it won't bloom if it started to already produce a new growth. And that might be because, I don't know, it might be because of lack of sunshine or not the best care or something like that. So you will know after a pseudobulb was matured, it will bloom if it had its proper care. If you are talking about blooming and blooming oncidiums, we can see a pattern in different hybrids. For example, there are hybrids which can mature a pseudobulb in a very short time and then they will grow spikes and they, these spikes will grow like for a half a year, for six months. Also, there can be some Oncidium types which will only create one suitable per year and it will bloom once per year. So it's, it's real different from hybrid to hybrid and from species to species. Some flower spikes can be created in one month. For example, on the beginning of the month, flower spike is only this size and at the end of the month, the first bloom is already open. But there are some spikes, for example, the Oncidium tiny twinkles can have those slow growing spikes. Also, the Oncidium sherry baby can have that. So sometimes they can be really slow, some can be really fast. So it just depends on the actual hybrid or the species of Oncidium you have. Now let's talk about repotting Oncidiums. You have to repot your Oncidiums whenever medium is side, the pot is actually broken down. So if you are using organic medium like Magnum Moss, that can actually break down in two years. So after two years you have to repot it again. And if you want to know how to repot an Oncidium, check the info card because I have a video about that and when I saved orchids and I received Oncidiums as well. But if you are using inorganic medium and it's not breaking down, that means you have to only repot your Oncidium when it's already too big for its pot and the new growths are actually growing out from the pot and there is no room for the new roots to actually enter the pot, they are just growing outside the pot. In that case, you might have to think about repotting because, well, yeah, the new roots want to be used as much as the older roots. So in that case, you might want to repot your orchid as well. If you have a new Oncidium which you just bought and it's in flower, it's a good idea to wait for the flower spike to fade and after the flower spikes have wilted, you can cut the flower spikes because in rare cases they can rebloom. For example, Tolumnias will rebloom from uh, spent spikes or actually these um, Hovear lava burst can rebloom. You can see there is already a branch here growing there. In most cases, one flower spike has wilted, it won't rebloom. So you are safe to cut those spikes, and after it, you can actually repot because those orchids, which were in the garden centers and these stores, and you just bought them in flower, they were in the same medium for a quite amount of years, and it's a good idea to repot them because the media is already broken down in that pot. 
and if you had them for two years and the medium has broken down you can again repot them but the best time to repot is actually after flowering because after flowering a new growth will be created and with new growth there come new roots as well and it's a good idea to repot at that time because if you stress your orchid by repotting it might be a bad idea to do that because it will be stressed and it will have to wait to that at least to that time when it starts to produce roots on the, on its own. But if you repot at that time when new roots are actually just growing, they will enter the new fresh medium and they can absorb moisture and nutrients so it won't be that much stress for the orchid. There can be some popular hybrids and there can be a lot of different hybrids in the Oncidium intergeneric world. There can be for example the Brassias which have really long petals and sepals and they look like huge stars. Also there can be these tinier Oncidiums, for example this one, like the Hoveara Lava Burst Red Bug. This is a tiny Oncidium, look at that, these leaves are really just short, the actual flowers are really tiny. Also there can be some Oncidiums, for example like the Sherry Baby, also a little bit of Catherine Zock, it falls that into that category. The Catherine Zock is a much larger plant because the leaves are longer, they are bigger, but the flowers are still tiny. But there are some Oncidium intergeneric hybrids, uh, which can be the same size as this Catherine Zock, but they have bigger flowers. For example, the Vostekaras or the Colmenaras have bigger flowers. Also, there are some Brassia intergeneric hybrids. Their genes go back to the Brassia plant, and Brassias have huge flowers. So there can be a lot of shapes and sizes in the Oncidium orchid family because there are a lot of types of Oncidiums. Also, if you are in Europe, you can easily encounter the name Cumbria, which is actually not a new species, not a new hybrid, not anything like that. It's just a name which was created by these nurseries and they are naming Cumbria every orchid which is in this Oncidium family. So it is just a commercial name, it's not a original name, it's not a name which is official because for example they can name Cumbria this Hovera as well, they can name Cumbria this Oncidium Catherine Zuck as well. So they name Cumbria everything which is in this Oncidium family but there are some really popular hybrids for example the sherry baby is really popular i think this oncidium uh, lava burst Ho hovera lava burst red bug is really popular as well and you can find for example the jungle monarch was really popular in last year in europe i've seen it everywhere and also there is another type the oncidopsis which are oncidiums and miltoniopsis crossed together for example nelly eiler or the partly schwartz which i have and i love that one well watch out not to confuse miltoniopsis with oncidiums because miltoniopsis well they need a slightly different care because they like more humidity, they are like more water and they like less temperature because they are really just cold growers. Okay, and one last thing about these Oncidium intergerics, some can be fragrant, some can be not fragrant. For example, this one is really not fragrant. It is showstopper because it has a million blooms, but it really doesn't have a fragrance. But for example, the Catherine Zock here, it's fragrance. It will have vanilla, chocolatey fragrance, but there are a lot of types of fragrances in the Oncidium family. For example, Asher babies are known to be very fragrant. They have this really sweet, powerful, chocolatey, vanilla, cakey fragrance, but there are some orchids which have rather a spicy fragrance. For example, a lot of Brassias have a spicy, peppery fragrance, which is really just weird to feel a peppery fragrance from an orchid. Also, there can be some fragrances from this fruity and florally category, but they are rather rare in the Oncidium family. And also, some can have a fishy undertone to them and a plasticky feel to their fragrance. Yeah, this is my video for today and 
I hope I gave you an idea about the Oncidiums, Oncidium Intergenics, their care and they, their look and their growth and about everything and if I miss anything from this video, well leave a comment what did I miss and I will make it up somehow. So this is my video for today. If you liked it, click on the like button, you leave a comment down in the comment section below. You can also subscribe to my channel and don't forget to push that bell button thingy so you will be notified if I upload a video. Also you can subscribe to my other channel, you can follow me on Instagram and yeah, see you next time. Bye guys! Organic medium like bar chicks, bar Park chicks, what is that?